become rock and roll's most unfortunate and celebrated casualty. In this, the Pete Best story, Beatle, by Pete Best and Patrick Doncaster. But before we talk to him, let's have a look at how the, uh, the incident was dramatised in the film The Birth of the Beatles. Please. What do you mean, Pete's out? And Ring goes in. I like Pete. He's very popular. Girls sleep out in his garden. It's good for the whole group. Pete's not a beetle. He's too conventional. Anyway, Ringo's a professional. This doesn't make sense. You could have got rid of Pete after the trip to Hamburg. Pete hasn't grown like the rest of us. Don't upset the apple cart. Everything's finally going well. The record company heard his drumming. They liked it. You're not listening, Eppy. He's a drag. He don't spark. I'm sick of him just sitting there. You're sick of the girls liking him and saying, Pete Best and the Beatles. Maybe, Dr. Sigmund Deppy. Maybe. How are you going to tell him? We're not. You are. Me? You want me to tell him? Well, you're the manager. Can you get me Pete Best, Mrs. Fleming? Boys want Ringo to be their drummer. Never mind, Mrs. Fleming. I can give you Pete Best. He's sitting right here, the real one. Sorry, which camera are we on? Over there? Over there. That'll do. Pete, how accurate was that reconstruction of that, the incident? That portrays it very well. Um, you know, the same feeling comes across in that particular clip. I mean, Did they never have the guts to face you themselves? No. Uh, this was something which they left entirely up to Brian Epstein. Um, it, it comes out that he was the guy who did the dirty work, mm. which they'd thought of beforehand. Now, in, in the book that you've just written, this yep. uh, Pete Best story, there's many possible reasons that you outline in there for why you were sacked. I mean, something as trivial as because you refused to comb your fringe forward, <laughs> or uh, George Martin said you were an inadequate drummer, yep. too much attention from the girls, not enough on them, incompatible personality. But you dismiss each one in turn. So after 22 years, yep. have you decided what was the reason you were fired from the Beatles? There isn't a specific reason you can give, but most of it counts, uh, looking back on it, that it was jealousy. You know, I was in fact becoming too popular um, for the, the era at that time. Right. It was a case that they turned around and said, OK. I didn't find out at that time. It was what people said afterwards. They turned around and said, Pete, you weren't aware of it, but, you know, it was becoming Pete Best and the Beatles. You were becoming the focal point. And they didn't like that. No. I found the book disappointing in one aspect in that most of it's a very entertaining account of the hijinks in Hamburg and mm -hmm. uh, cavorting at the cavern yeah. and what have you. But it's only the last chapter where you get down to dealing with how you've managed to live from day to day for the past 22 years as someone who's uh, had to carry this massive rejection. And yeah. Rejection is a, a basic human fear. What's it been like and, and how have you caught? Because you dismiss it fairly swiftly in those final pages. It's something which, OK, over a course of time, when it initially happened, it caused me a lot of grief. You know, resentment, bitterness, I've got to be honest about that. You, you tried at one stage to commit suicide, didn't you? That's right, yeah. I mean, OK, if I turned around and said it didn't affect my lifestyle, I'd be wrong. You know, I'd be totally sort of dishonest with the public, and this is what I'm trying to get over to them. Do you think you've got over it now? Time has mellowed. I mean, yeah. it's a course of where, you know, natural progression. My lifestyle's changed a lot now compared well, to what you do used now? to What do you do now? What's your profession now, if you... Believe it or not, I'm a civil servant. <laughs> <laughs> Why has it taken 22 years for you to get around to writing your account? Initially... I didn't want to be the guy who jumped on the bandwagon. It right. would have been very easy for you to be a sure. professional ex -beatle. A lot of people turned around and said, OK, take the money and run for the hills. You right. know, clean up on it, make a fast book. But it was something which, OK, um, I felt the more I read about Beatles literature, you know, Hunter Davis, the rest of the stuff, you know, all the biographies, uh, shout. This particular era in time where the story evolved and it was yeah. the formative part of the Beatles years, right. was never covered. You know, it was sort of covered in a couple of paragraphs, half a chapter. And there was such a lot went into those years, which needs to be explained. Well, should George, Paul or Ringo be watching this programme tonight, what would you like to say to him? Not a lot. All right. Well, Pete Best, thanks very much for coming in. Best of luck with your book. Let's take a look at you in your, uh, in your Beatles days. And uh, here, the first recording that was ever made by the Beatles, where's the camera gone again? I never know this. And it was back in Tony Sheridan, recorded in a church in Hamburg in 1960. This is my bombing. <laughs>
That's the Beatles and My Bonnie with Tony Sheridan, of course. Now, what can you say about Meatloaf? That his dear wife does actually call him Meat?